What's happening guys and welcome back to the channel for today's video thanks to the team over at Shozy Store We're gonna be checking out the blocks Transformers Rise of the Beasts Wave 1 model kits Now the first wave does consist of Optimus Prime, Bumblebee and Scourge And if you guys would like to add any of these including their upcoming Optimus Primal to your collections Then definitely be sure to head down to the links in the description box below Now I've been super excited to check these out because so far I think all of the model kits released for this movie have been insane awesome. These are a little more traditional in the way they're put together because you have tiny little pieces on a sprue which you have to assemble from the ground upwards. But the biggest selling point for these three for me would be that according to the packaging everything is pre-painted. You don't need any glue nor no clippers. So I'm hoping that it should be quite a straightforward process. So with all that being said, let's get cracking. And bang, here we have the leader of the Autobots, Optimus Prime, fully assembled into his robot mode. So the build process is definitely a lot more involved when in comparison to some of the yellow part kits. Although, thankfully, the instructions are super easy to follow. So I still think it's quite a straightforward process. And one thing which I think is super important to discuss when reviewing models would be the plastic quality. You know, this guy is significantly smaller when in comparison to any of the previous model kits that I've checked out. And he still holds up very well. I mean, during the assembly process, at no point did I feel as if I was going to break anything and once fully assembled he definitely for the most part does feel very durable so that's great. Now as we check out the details he is a little more stylized when in comparison to how he appeared in the movie so for example the hands and the head are definitely enlarged but very nicely detailed. I mean check out the face design that looks awesome. I also love the attention to detail of them packing in the matrix chamber beneath Optimus Prime's chest piece so that's great and the mechanical detail just throughout this guy looks sick. I mean even the insides of the legs have been detailed to match the actual CGI design and as we flip him around here to the back one of my all-time favorite pieces about this Optimus design would be the super sick spinal column and as you guys can see they have not failed to sculpt that in so that's really awesome and the back of this guy has been just as nicely detailed as the front even as we spin him here to the side we get the wheels some sick mechanical detail for the side of the arm as well as the smokestack so all in all a pretty detailed looking figure and I'd say he's only roughly four inches tall so pretty impressive now all three of these guys guys do have built-in internal LEDs so in order to activate them you basically have to give them a harsh push on the back and check this out the eyes do illuminate as so does the matrix chamber so we can pull open Optimus Prime's chest to light our darkest hour and check that out we do get a fully detailed chamber unfortunately no matrix of leadership but that was something that never appeared in the movie and for a second I thought that it was gonna just as Optimus Prime destroyed the transwarp key I definitely thought he was gonna deploy the matrix in order to take out Unicron but yeah that is some super sick detail but it doesn't stop there because we have to check out Prime's accessories <laughs> Stand down. So first up, we do get his arm cannon, which looks awesome. In terms of detail, this thing is so great. And I love the way it integrates into the forearm because it definitely does give you the impression that much like in the movie, it has transformed out of the bottom of his arm. So yeah, this looks great. Unfortunately, he only includes one weapon and no interchangeable pair of hands. It would have been great had maybe they included two of these arm cannons or at the very least had given us an additional energy on sword as he did use that quite a lot in the film. But nevertheless, this looks awesome. I have tried to integrate this onto the Studio Series Optimus Prime, but unfortunately the tiny little port on the bottom is just way too small to slide into the peg of Buzzworthy Prime. So unless you modify it, unfortunately the weapons are not cross-compatible with other Hasbro figures. So let's check out the display base, which has been very nicely detailed. So these are stickers, you have to apply these yourselves, but luckily the holes and the slots in the base line up perfectly. So I don't think it's too bad, and we also get a pair of blast effects, which are great. Now the soles of Prime's feet can peg onto these tabs, which I find to be excellent Excellent, especially for posing him into some of those slightly more dynamic positions. So, yeah, this is awesome. Next up making his comeback once again would be Bumblebee and I do think this guy may be a little more accurate when in comparison to Optimus Prime because proportion wise he's not as stylized so for example the hands and the head don't appear to be as large as Optimus and overall I think he's pretty dead on to the movie so as we check out the details the face sculpt is just awesome especially the pupil detail is so accurate to the movie and I love the chest design I really do think this is my favorite live action movie design for Bumblebee because in 2023 this guy not only 
still transforms into a Camaro, but the 1977 OG Camaro, which was the very first time that we saw Bumblebee in live action. So yeah, a great blend between his 2018 design and the 07 design. I think this guy looks awesome. And all of the additional kind of Camaro panels that you guys can see here for the legs and the arms, I think come together super well. As we flip this guy around here to the back, when he does eject out of the back of Stratosphere in the final battle, his door wings do split into four pieces. So excellent to see them replicate that here. We even get some spinal detail and the back of this guy has just been as accurately detailed as the front. So yeah, all in all, he's super solid. May even be better than Optimus Prime. Now, in terms of his LED feature, again, you give him a harsh push here on the back and the eyes do illuminate, although for some strange reason on my copy, the back of the head glows brighter than the front of the head. So yeah, that's a little strange, but let's check out his accessories. And Bumblebee actually includes the most out of all three. So in addition to the pair of open palm hands, we get a pair of fisted hands. I have come to kick ass. Bumblebee's iconic classic Stinger Blaster, which much like Optimus Prime, really does give you the impression that it has formed out of his forearm. So yeah, the detailing on this is great and we get an additional yellow panel again to really make it look seamless with the arm. So this is a great accessory. And probably most interesting of all, we get an alternate chest piece as well as an additional blade for Scourge so that you can accurately recreate Bumblebee's death scene from the Rise of the Beast movie. Now, I guess in some ways I'm giving a few spoilers for the Scourge figure, but check out how the blade sticks in the front of B and then ejects out of the back with this burning flaming orange. So personally, I thought this was a fantastic attention to detail and I think this is the first time that we can actually reenact Bumblebee's death from the Transformers 7 movie. So yeah, this is awesome and will most definitely be how I'll be displaying these two on the shelf. And then to round things off completely for Bumblebee, much like Optimus Prime, we get the same style of display base included, although this time it has some different graphics as well as these awesome flame effects, I guess to go with his death scene. So yeah, awesome attention to detail with this B figure. And arguably saving the best for last, we have Unicron's most powerful henchman, the leader of the Terracons, Scourge. And this guy looks awesome. Definitely the best out of all three in my personal opinion. So as we check out the details, in the movie, his head design was basically the Terracon insignia. So that's what we have here for this guy. But check out kind of the chain detail that we have wrapped around the neck and the internal burning orange transparent plastic, I think looks super sick. And it's going to get even better when we activate his LEDs in just a second. I also love the attention to detail of the insignias of those he kills. So on this shoulder, we have an Autobot and a Maximo, I believe. This one is an Autobot, I guess the faction that he collected from Bumblebee. And on the side of this forearm, we get a Decepticon insignia as well as two Autobot ones. And the shade of gunmetal gray that they've used for the plastic is just so nicely done. Really does pick out some of the sharper details of the sculpt. We get an Autobot and a Decepticon logo here for this side. So that's super cool. And I love the asymmetry of Scourge. So check out this claw arm. I mean, he was an absolute savage in the movie. He he used this to basically rip Ape Link into two pieces and then to take B clean out. So yeah, this looks super sick. I think the attention to detail that we have for the leg design looks awesome, especially with the foot guard and all of the different nuts and bolts. And as we spin him around here to the back, check out those quadruple smokestacks. So all in all, this guy is so sick looking, but let's light him up. So much like the previous two, give him a harsh bash on the back and bang, Scourge is instantly brought to life. And ever since I've got this guy, I've been putting him into a darkly lit room and trying to recreate the very first time that we see Scourge in live action when he's approaching Ape Link on the Maximal Planet. And I think this is the closest we have so far come to seeing a Scourge action figure which can faithfully replicate that kind of internal burning effect that he had in the movie. So check out the eyes. They look super cool. The neck illuminates as so does the middle of the chest and all of the torso. It really does look great, but we have to check out his firepower. So first up, in order to murder Maximals, Autobots and Decepticons, we do get his sick sword blade, which much like the Studio Series version, has been so nicely detailed. I mean, look at all of the various different cracks that we have. I guess he's been slaying Transformers for centuries, so that's why it looks so severely battle damaged. But basically, he has completed weapons because in the film, he used both the sword and primarily this claw weapon. So yeah, that's really cool. And probably the most interesting accessory out of the bunch, we get a pair of interchangeable shoulder pads. Now, to my knowledge, these better match what we saw from the concept art than as opposed to his final look in the movie. So if you don't like the slightly more curved shoulder design that he eventually had in the film, then you can have these slightly more angular ones, which to be fair, I do think look just as nice, although you do lose the insignias of those he has killed. So I guess there are pros and cons to both of the sculpts, but really nice that they did give these as an option. 
And much like the previous two, we also get a display base included, which I stupidly put the sticker on upside down. That's why it looks a little strange. But this is detailed to match Scourge. And unlike the previous two, we get a pair of burning flame effects. So whereas with Bumblebee, they were slightly more yellow, these ones are most definitely to match Scourge. So I thought that was really cool. Again, you can smack him into the base to pull off some of those slightly more dynamic poses. And I found this to be excellent, especially for recreating Bumblebee's death scene in the Transformers 7 movie. Now, all three roughly have the same points of articulation, so I will use Optimus Prime as a prime example. So, the head is on a ball joint, it will look up, it will look down, it will tilt side to side as well as rotate the full 360. The shoulders on both Prime and Scourge can hinge up and down as well as go all the way around. They'll hinge out to the sides, we get a 90 degree bend there in the elbow. Bicep rotation as well as ball jointed wrists, which in addition to going all the way around, can also hinge up and down as well as forwards and backwards. Every single one of them have a fantastic waist joint, which again can rotate the full 360. And all of them roughly have 90 here at the hip, which can kick forwards that far, back to that far, out to the side. We also get a rotation just above the knee, which can bend to 90. And then finally for the ankles, these can rock backwards, forwards, tilt side to side, as well as rotate the full 360. In addition to all of that, in the case of Bumblebee, all four door wings are individually articulated, so you can hinge these however you want, and if you wanted to kind of combine the two door wings to create a solid door, then that is absolutely something that you can do. And then Scourge is in fact the most articulated out of the bunch, so in addition to all of the points which I showcased previously, he also does have a lower forearm swivel, as well as a wrist swivel, and all four of his fingers are individually articulated, so you can completely splay them open to make it look as if though he's about to absolutely annihilate a Link on the battlefield and his blade is also on a ball joint so you can move this around or completely remove it if you so desire. Now as we check out a few comparisons here we have Optimus Prime compared alongside Scourge, Bumblebee alongside Prime, Scourge stacked up with Bumblebee, here is how they size up alongside their Studio Series counterparts so first up we have Terracon Scourge, Heroic Optimus Prime and leader of the Beehive Bumblebee. And finally, here is how they fare up alongside some of the Rise of the Beast core class figures. And one of my favourite things about these figures is that every single character is cross-compatible with one another. So, for example, you could take the arms of Optimus Prime and attach them onto the Scourge body. So, in this case, I've kind of played into the idea of maybe Scourge being a future version of Optimus Prime. And I actually think this looks really sick. If you wanted to, you could spice it up and add a few different Bumblebee limbs in. So, really excited to see as to what other characters they bring out in the future. Because we could maybe even add some Optimus Primal limbs onto this guy to make him look even crazier. And so, wrapping up on this review for the blocks, Transformers Rise of the Beasts model kits. For a first wave, I am incredibly impressed. All three of these guys are super nicely detailed and for their scale, surprisingly incredibly articulated, especially in the case of that Scourge. You can get him into some pretty dynamic poses. Accessories for the most part, I think are great for all three. Scourge comes with some great ones and Bumblebee includes the most. It would have been nice had Optimus Prime at least included one in a John Sword, as that was a weapon that we saw him use quite Quite a bit in the movie but the arm cannon is more than enough and is super nicely detailed and definitely does give you the impression that it has formed out of the arm and then to wrap things up completely I love how all of the limbs are kind of cross compatible with one another so if you wanted to you could kind of create this Frankenstein transformer design and in the case of blending Optimus Prime and Scourge personally I feel as if though it works perfectly if you guys want to add any of these to your collection including the upcoming Optimus Primal then definitely be sure to head down to the links in the description box below and until my next review. I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.